In this video, we will learn how to draw a scatter graph in Adobe Illustrator. It is possible to draw a scatter graph in Adobe Illustrator, but I don't recommend it. Um, I would recommend actually drawing the graph in Excel and then copying and paste it into Adobe Illustrator. But if you really want to draw it in Adobe Illustrator, here's how you would do it. Okay, so go over here to the left and you should see a graph that says uh, three bars. If you don't, if you don't see these two columns of tools over here, go up to Window, go down to Toolbars, and click Advanced. Also, you might, you should see a Control toolbar up top. If you don't see that, go over to Window and then click on Control so that that shows up. Okay, so go down to this Graph function over here, click with your left mouse button and hold, and then go down to Scatter Graph. Okay, and then click with your left mouse button, hold, and then release to create the size of the graph that you want. And there's a lot of problems with this feature, like this text size is just massive relative to the graph. The tick marks are in, inside. There's nothing you can do to ch change really any of that until way after. Um, but um, we'll, it, there are some limitations by far. But anyways, let's just, let's just draw the graph. The data is put in with the first value, first column is y, is the y-axis, and the second column is the x-axis. Typically it's x and y, but this is y and then x. So here's one, and then we're gonna type in two for the second data point, and then three, five, I'm just adding random data, but of course you're going to have specific values If you want to have two groups, then you create a second set of columns right next to the first set. So let's let's delete the first row and let's type in apples. And then right over here, we're going to type in cherries. Hopefully I'm spelling these things right. And let's just go along here. Okay, so there's the data, and you can't see it yet, but um, if I click away, you might barely be able to see it, but the darker squares are down here on the bottom, and then the lighter squares are up on top, and these are the two groups that I typed in. Okay, let's modify this graph. Click once on the graph, then I right-click, and then I go down to Type. And the legend up on top that can be modified by this check box right here uh, unfortunately it doesn't update it immediately so in order to remove it and to see that effect you have to click OK but then it adds it over here on the right okay has been made so I'm gonna right click again click on type now I'm gonna go to the value axis because there's some data that might be right on the axis itself and I don't like that. I, I, I want there to be a gap and I like my graphs to start at zero. So let's go to the, the, the value axis. That one looks pretty good because it does start at zero so we're gonna leave that alone. If you want to create grid lines then click down and on the tick marks click full width. And that would create grid lines. So if you go over here to bottom axis, go down here to full width, click OK. Now you have a grid appearance. Okay, so let's click on it, right click, click on type. I don't like that, so I'm going to remove that. But you you may have a need for it. So go down to bottom axis, click on short. Now bottom axis is the x axis, and here I want the to define the um, the limits of this axis see because you have one data point that's all the way on the extreme I guess that's okay we'll leave that the way it is but I want to modify the minimum here and click on zero and type zero and click OK so now we're at zero to 6.6 .6. now let's modify the number of tick marks okay so let's right click let's click again right click type because we don't want zero then 1.2 and 2.4 that sound that looks a little weird so I'm gonna go down to the bottom axis and we're going to click, or you're gonna type in six for the number of divisions. 
click OK. So the next thing is these markers are way too small to see. I mean, this is totally not going to work. So let's make these markers a little larger. So I'm going to zoom in, holding the Alt key and spinning the mouse mill. And I'm going to create a square exactly the same size as that, or roughly the same size. Put it about like that. I'm going to click the selection tool and I'll move that across. And the reason why we did this is whenever we create the marker, it's going to make it in reference to this item right here. Okay, so the next thing we want is let's say let's say we want a diamond to define the marker. I'm going to go to the uh, rectangle tool and I'm going to hold shift and then release and then I'm going to rotate this hold the shift key and release click on this and click up two three four okay all right so there's the diamond I'm going to make this black and let's make this red in the inside okay so that's one now what I want to do is I'm going to take this dot here and I'm going to move it all the way to the center and I'm going to make the fill nothing. So no fill. Okay, make sure I have the selection tool and I'm going to select those two items here. And let me actually copy that. Okay, move it over here. I'm going to make this one, uh, let's make it a uh, a cyan color. Okay, so these are the two marker styles. Let's make sure that they're about the size that we want. The answer to that is no, these are too large. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and bring them down. Okay, something like that. So you're gonna select this object, go up to object, go down to graph, go over to design, click new design and rename and let's say red marker click okay and then click okay select the second one go up to object down to graph design new design rename blue marker and click okay now i'm going to move these off of the graph okay and now click on this direct selection tool click on click and hold go to group selection tool and i'm going to click once on one of these data points and then i'm going to click again when i click the second time you, you should see all of these selected okay so don't just double click really fast just click and then click again and make sure you're using this group selection tool with the little plus sign Go to Object, Graph, and then click on Marker, and we'll make it red. And click OK. And then we'll click on this one, and click again, just like those. Object, Graph, Marker, Blue Marker, and click OK. And unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't modify the the legend so what i recommend to do is to simply add that manually to the legend i'm going to extend this x-axis so i'm going to go to bottom axis let's make that seven and change the divisions to seven click okay all right this object with the left mouse click the graph with the left mouse button and click Shift Control G. So that's going to ungroup the object. So it's hold shift and control and then press G. And then you get this warning that says if you do this, you know, there's no going back, can't modify the data, that's fine. Click yes. And then now you're going to add a modify the different components. So let's ungroup this. I'm going to double click on here to go inside this first group. Select, actually, I'm going to click on, click and hold and go to direct selection tool, 
select all of that, control C, and then control V. Click on the selection tool, and let's delete these. I'm gonna group, let's ungroup all. Okay. So let's delete these. The, this, the larger one was on the cherries. Smaller ones ungroup. Move this over. Make sure it. it to make to get these aligned, select both of them, and click vertical align. Let's move this over. Let's uh, ungroup again. Let's move this down. I'm going to align this horizontally, so select those objects, align horizontal, select these two objects, align horizontal. Okay, so I'm going to move this one over, select all of those uh, text, hold shift key, and then, oh, control Z, control Z. Let's ungroup that, ungroup all, ungroup all. Select those text, hold the shift key and move it over. Select these text objects, move it down. And we're having to do all of this because there's not many options in that uh, graph selection tools. I want to align these tick marks so that the right side is aligned. I want them pointing outwards. So I'm gonna select all of these things hold the shift key and click on that line. So you should just see those selected. With my left mouse button, as these things are selected, with my left mouse button, I'm gonna click so that this turns blue, okay? And that makes this the key object, this line. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click horizontal align right. See how it pops them out? Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Select all of those. Oops, I selected that object. I'm just gonna hold shift and click on that. While holding shift, I'm gonna click again with the left mouse button. I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna click on this horizontal axis line and I'm going to align to the top. Okay, so that moves everything. It moves all of those tick marks on the outside. All right, so I want to select this whole axis and the tick marks to increase the line thickness. I'm just going to click on one of these objects, go over to select, same appearance. And that's, that selects all of the items that have that same appearance. And since, since only the axis marks have that appearance, it only selects those items. And I'm going to increase the line thickness. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is I want to shrink this graph. Okay, I want to keep all the line thicknesses about the same. So I'm going to type in S on the keyboard and press enter. And I'm going to make sure that these, the scale corners and scale strokes effects are not selected. Click OK. Now I'm going to go to the selection tool, left mouse button, select all of these items, hold the shift key, and then put my cursor right over here on the top left left mouse button, I'm going to drag it down just to reduce the size. And then with the left mouse button, I'm going to click on one of these objects. But since everything's selected, it's going to move them all. Click and hold, and then release. And now I'm going to add the y-axis and the labels for the axes. So I'm going to click on the bottom. So I clicked on the text object, and then I clicked on the bottom and type mass. <laughs> These are small apples and cherries. And I'm going to change this to Arial and move this to whatever size. Let's make it 60. I want to put line this in the center. So I'm going to do center align, align the text in this, in this text object to the center. I'm going to hold the shift, click with my left mouse button, click again so that that turns blue. And I'm going to align towards the center. There we go. So it aligns this. It's really important that you align this text to the center, the paragraph style into the center, and you align it in the center with it relative to this other object. All right, so I'm going to 
click on that object, that that label, hold the Alt key, then click with my left mouse button. I'm holding with the left mouse button and the Alt key, and then I'm going to release my mouse, then release the Alt key. I'm going to, until I see that little curved arrow, I'm going to click and hold, hold the Shift key so that it snaps to vertical. And then move it over here, Health. Okay. Again, I want to make sure this is aligned to the center. Hold the shift key and click with my left mouse button. So click on the vertical axis. Click again so that turns blue. Now I'm going to align to this vertical align to the center. Click OK. I'm going to move this just a little bit closer. All right, now let's select this. This is on Myriad Pro. So I'm going to go over here to the top, go to select, same font family. Okay, I'm going to make that Arial. Okay, and that is how you do a scatter graph in Adobe Illustrator. Again, that's a lot of work. I rather I recommend making it in Excel or MATLAB or Python and just copying and pasting it in here. Because if you find that you need to add some data, you would have to do all that again. And that's just crazy. Anyways, that is how you do a scatter graph in Adobe Illustrator.